Hi everyone, today I'm actually very excited to show you this model from Metal Earth and it's going to be from the TV show on Disney Plus called The Mandalorian and this is going to be of the child or aka Baby Yoda or aka Gragu. So overall the model was not very difficult to build. Um, I would rate it a difficulty of medium which the box shows right here. Um, it well, actually wasn't too difficult, but there are a few parts where I would feel like it's a little bit tricky. So hopefully this video will kind of help you kind of clear up maybe certain areas that you weren't kind of, uh, you were sure of. So this is a two sheet model, and so it's actually not too complicated with not too many parts. The one big difference that I've noticed with this model set versus any of the other Metal Earth series has been that it comes with this piece of brown fabric that's supposed to be used for Gragu's bed. So you're going to put this piece of fabric behind Gragu um, inside of his floating kind of eggshell bed. And so without further ado, let's get started. So uh, just to explain kind of how to look at this manual, you are going to see the part list here and then on the right side you're going to see the parts like sheet B1, part number 1. And so you're actually going to use this to reference which parts to cut out from the sheet using your uh, wire snipper. So I am actually going to be using this wire cutter and how I cut it and how you're supposed to kind of cut it in general is um, a lot of these sheets you're going to see kind of like a tab, like a triangle shaped tab that's connecting the parts to the sheet. And so you're going to try to fit in the wire cutter as close to the part as possible so that the very edge of the triangle tip so that you can kind of just snip it very easily. You don't have to put too much pressure in it and it should snip off relatively easy. So for the main body of Baby Yoda or Kragu, um, it's actually a, more of an oval shape but what I actually ended up doing was create more of a circular cylinder and then um, I would actually kind of bend it into place but um, the one thing I did differently here that I wanted to do that was a cleaner finish was uh, usually I just leave the, the whole tab at, which is what I would call it because there's two parts there's the, the long tab and then the whole tab where you're putting the long tab into so in this case I actually tried to bend the whole tab just so that it gets a cleaner finish because a lot of times when you don't do that what ends up happening is you're going to get a slight little bulge not very noticeable I just wanted to make sure that it looks very clean because the whole design of this model looked very slick that I wanted to put that extra effort in the hand is actually relatively easily. Uh, you just have to make sure you have the wrist be in a circular, circular shape, and then you just put the tab through each other and then close it off. So uh, one thing that I do want to mention is that uh, there are two different ways to kind of secure the two parts together. Um, so you're going to see on the manual sometimes you're going to see a triangle, a green triangle shape versus like a blue circle shape. So the blue circle shape you're just bending the tab 90 degrees while the green tab like you're seeing here you're supposed to bend the tab 90 degrees. And a lot of times you're going to have the green tab uh, when it's going to be an area where you're not going to see the tab so you know it's not too bad to have it be twisted because you're, it's just not going to be visible. For the arm sleeve, uh, what I ended up doing was just making sure they're, they're kind of like circular or cylindrical shape for each kind of wedge piece. And then I'm going to start at the, the base of the, uh, the circle pretty much and kind of secure that in first. And then I'm going to fit the top two wedge pieces in uh, one by one uh, just so that you kind of get a shape. And in the middle, I'm actually going to be using uh, some of my round tip pliers or uh, like a dapping block kind of cylindrical tool with a spear head just to kind of shape the sleeve a little bit better. So there might be a little bit of a gap between the, the, the pieces and so this is kind of where I'm using the, uh, the, the spherical shaped head uh, tool called a dapping block uh, to kind of just push it in and kind of shape it until the gap between the two the wedges are actually minimized as much as possible.
typically I would try to have the tab go inward so that you don't see the tab but for this kind of uh, sleeve end piece um, I actually had to put the tab facing out and then putting the tab hole through that tab uh, sticking out and then securing it in place just because trying to go in the opposite way was it was actually getting blocked by the other sleeve part that I was fitting this piece into. You're going to repeat this step for the other side of the sleeve. Now this part, you're actually going to combine the two different pieces together by just folding the tab down and then putting it in place and just kind of securing the tabs. This will actually end up being the top of the collar around the Baby Yoda shirt. So this part is actually going to be the inside of the collar around the shirt and so you actually want to have it be kind of an inverted cone shape um, where the uh, you're actually having more of a concave look instead of a convex look. You may have to shape the concave uh, piece that you created to make sure that it fits with the top of the collar so that all the tabs fit in nicely with very little gap. Again, using my dapping tool, I'm actually just pressing up against the sides to make sure that the gap between the two pieces are reduced as much as possible. So this piece is actually like a long strip and then like this kind of half moon piece. And so what you actually want to just do is just uh, make a circle pretty much with the long strip piece. And then the, uh, the top part that looks like a wedge, you're just bending just slightly because that will actually just come straight down at a 90 degrees to fit in between the two tabs to kind of close off this uh, other part of the collar. When you put the two collar pieces together, uh, you're just gonna, I actually start from the middle and just work my way outwards on each side. Um, the only cautionary is that the front of the collar where the two edges of the strip are going to be, they will overlap and it's actually uh, intentional. So don't try to like uh, have it edge to edge and make sure that it actually does overlap a little bit. I'm going to do my best to try to explain how to work on this head and we're actually going to be kind of using the dapping tool spearhead to kind of just roll the strips of the head on the, the top and the kind of sides of the head to create kind of our, it's almost like a rugby ball or football kind of shape and then once we kind of get the shapes together um, we're going to use uh, the tabs on the, uh, the edges of those uh, strips and kind of fit it in one by one but then um, afterwards, what we're going to do is the, the face, so the front face where the eyes are, um, is actually not going to be straight, but it will actually be a slightly uh, concave shape. So you're actually going to be bending it inwards to kind of fit it nicely. And then the tricky part after that is actually going to be to wrap the, the bottom where the nose and the mouth would be for Kragu. Um, you're going to kind of make it into kind of like this kind of uh, wavy W shape that's going to fit around the bottom of the, uh, the eye piece. Um, so kind of shaping that is kind of tricky and so I would say this is probably the trickiest part to do just because it's such a intricate shape and you just have all these kind of pieces coming together in one single piece. Although it'll be a lot easier to just have the tab uh, stick out 
I actually really wanted to hide the two tabs here just because um, it is the face that I did not want to actually have these kind of uh, ugly tabs sticking out um, that I kind of put the extra effort in but this is totally optional I don't think it looks that bad if it, if the tab was actually protruding out and you bend it um, afterwards uh, but you know this is just kind of going the extra mile to make sure that it has like the cleanest look as possible so this is the kind of W or like the wavy shape that I was talking about that you're going to be putting on the underside of the eye part of the piece. After I'm done connecting all the pieces, I just use a dapping block with a kind of very small spearhead just to kind of flush out the, the edges and just trying to shape it a little bit better and have it a little bit more rounded. And now I'm actually going to show you how to make the ear. I actually made one already, uh, but the, it's actually very simple. You're going to bend this tab and then you're going to fold the, the part down where it looks like a butterfly wing down into half and you're going to fit that tab through the hole. And then once you secure that tab by bending it, uh, you just kind of get like a very thin rod shape to kind of start bending it around. So you're going to create a circle, circular shape and then fit the tab through the hole. And then you're going to actually get the shape of it. But what it, I realized is that, you know, with Baby Yoda, his ear is actually not a curve as much as like a very, very uh, shallow or like rugby ball so that it's actually going to be more of an elliptical shape and so what I did was I made sure that the top of the ear kind of bent down a little bit sharply and then the rest I kind of just used my fingers to press or squeeze the two pieces together just to kind of create more of an oval shape. It really helps to have like a very thin plier. Um, don't try to use a tweezer because tweezers are not strong enough to bend the pliers but um, the, the one that I use is actually very nice because it's a very uh, fine edge so that I can actually get through a lot of cracks to fit in um, and actually bend the tabs around very easily. So all I'm doing here is actually just kind of bending the fingers down a little bit just to kind of give it more of a natural look because before it felt very flat and kind of just straight. So just kind of giving that kind of curvature and bending the fingertips down actually makes it look a lot nicer. So hopefully this is kind of where you wish where the, the sleeve part that you created was the right shape so that it kind of just fits in nicely. I actually lucked out that the uh, the curvature I had was actually perfect so it only took a little bit of shaping but you may have to kind of reshape it as you go along just to make sure that uh, it fits within the holes. Make sure when you're trying to fit these pieces in that you're actually going with the outer circle of holes instead of the inner circles because the inner circle will actually be uh, used for attaching uh, baby Yoda's head. The head can be a little bit tricky just because you don't really get you don't get to see where the holes are because it's kind of covered by the collar um, so hopefully you know you have the shape uh, kind of done correctly so you can kind of just fit it in and see the tabs go through from the underside. So the only thing to kind of watch out for here is as you bend the side pieces around you're actually going to be bending a curvature uh, for the sides of these consoles so that uh, it kind of fits through the hole so it's actually better to probably uh, shape the curvature first and then just uh, bend the side piece down 90 degrees so they just kind of fits the tab through the hole very easily. For these pieces that are going to be going onto the console, we're going to be making eight pieces total. But it's uh, it's pretty much like a box where you're folding down the four or three sides. Except that the top side, you're going to see that um, the the strip sticks out a little bit more than the width of the box, and it's because you're going to be bending that down at a 45 degree angle at the edges to kind of give like a beveled corner. And then after you create all eight pieces, we're going to be attaching all of them to the side of the consoles. Uh, one by one and then now you have the all the eight pieces on here as you can see here 
So for this curvature, you actually don't need to curve the whole strip as much as just the backside. So I just made sure that I found the right uh, cylindrical shape uh, of my dapping tool. But if you have any rod or even anything circular that kind of fits the nice curvature of this flat piece, then you can use that as a guide to kind of uh, wrap the strip around. Same thing for this piece, kind of look at the avocado shaped uh, piece to kind of know what curvature you will need to make and just find a, a nice kind of spear or not spear but a cylindrical shape that kind of fits that profile. For this piece, I actually just use my hands to kind of just press a little bit because so, the curvature is actually not that great. I'm just making sure like the corner and the, the middle part is more bent um, and it's, I actually have more precise control by using my fingertips. So this part was actually out of sequence where I was supposed to add on that avocado shape to the side console part and then put the strip on. but. I actually just thought it was easier to put this piece on because it's actually not touching anything anyway so it didn't matter if I did this part first. So um, if you were confused by following this, uh, the steps of the manual, I do sometimes stray away from the direct order of sequence that they suggest just because I feel like certain parts can either be uh, skipped uh, for a little bit or it's actually better to have a different sequence just to make it easier. So this is actually when I decided to put the avocado shape on. Um, sequencing wise, it didn't really matter. So it's not like this was more efficient. To uh, to be honest, I actually just totally forgot about that stage until I realized that something looked like it was missing. And luckily it didn't actually affect the model building at all or the sequencing by putting this piece on later. And we are now attaching Gragu. And, um, like I said before, the body is actually slightly oval shaped and you can see kind of the oval shape you will need because when you look at the avocado shaped piece, you see the hole and then the taps around it. So if you use that as a guide when you're shaping the body, you can actually see uh, what shape you need to create. So for this piece, I actually like using the uh, the rod to kind of make the circular piece first and then just kind of bend it down so that once you bend the two sides down, you have your perfect cylinder. This part is a little bit tricky. Even with my small plier, I had a hard time kind of bending the last piece. So what I ended up doing was the last uh, bend. I actually pre-bent it a little bit so that once the uh, the other sides were kind of bent into the 90 degree angle, I just kind of used my finger to kind of just press gently down onto it until the box was closed on the side. So this piece was a little bit misleading so you're supposed to put all these kind of little strips down until it became what looks like kind of a beveled circle shape um, but what actually it really is is it's a little bit more straight edge so you're bringing it down so it's more of a cylindrical shape more than like a beveled uh, cylindrical shape and the only way I found out was actually by comparing it to this piece here and I found that the tabs were not fitting in properly so um, I actually, I, as I started pushing down the tabs, I realized it's, all, it's pretty much almost a cylindrical shape. 
So to best break down this part, you're actually going to have two different curvatures that are used by using different rods. So I actually ended up doing the two curvatures first and then using my plier to just bend the 90 degree angles where I need them to. Um, so just think of it like you're going to have a cylindrical shape, then you're going to have a 90 degree bend, and then you're going to have your cylindrical shape again, and then another uh, two bends just to close it off. So for the bottom of the carriage for uh, Gragu, um, it's kind of the same as a lot of the other metal earths where I was doing the helmets for let's say Boba Fett or Stormtrooper. Um, pretty much what you're using is a, a dapping tool or like anything with a kind of a spherical shape at the end so, so that you're kind of pressing down along it so you're, you're kind of like shaping the strips one by one and then afterwards I in this case if you look at all the strips all the taps are on one side sometimes they're um, you start with the middle and then you're, you're gonna see the taps go in on both edges one by one but in this case this was starting from the end piece and it's just all going in uh, kind of like sequentially from the first to the end and so just starting with one edge you know you're gonna start bending the tab and then fitting it through the hole um, and you know it, it takes a little bit of time and but don't worry about getting the shape perfect just you know get those uh, tabs all closed because you can always shape it afterwards just because once you have kind of your dome shape it's a lot easier like as you can see here i'm using my dapping tool to kind of just press up against the edges um part of it is to shape it and the other is that instead of having a lot of the times with this the kind of this uh, dome shape is that where the two uh, strips or the, the each wedge is meeting you're kind of going to have a sharp kind of turn so if I use my dapping tool to kind of round those edges off, you get a little bit more of a smoother transition between each wedge. So for the hood of this carriage, it's kind of the same step where you're going to be using uh, like a spherical shape to kind of just shape down the piece. And then you're going to bend the sides down just 90 degrees. And so you can look at the side, pe uh, side of the piece to uh, Kind of guess what curvature you would need and then you're you're kind of creating these wedges so this one is actually three parts that you're putting together into a single wedge or actually i would say five pieces because you have your wings that you're adding on to um, but then some of the other pieces are going to be a little more straightforward so you're going to create a few wedge pieces that you're going to be attaching together to create the uh, kind of hoodie of this uh, carriage Make sure to look in the instructional manual to show um, where the holes go in because I actually made the mistake so I actually had to undo this and show it the proper way because I actually ended up using the wrong set of holes because you're going to have the two sets of holes, one for the top and for the bottom and so this is how it's supposed to look and also look at the manual very carefully to make sure that uh, with the strip which side is supposed to be exposed or the ones with the engraved or painted side just because um, it is actually very important which side is colored and it might be confusing when working on the model because it seems like it would have been uh, the opposite way of what you thought it would be. Now this piece looks more daunting than it really is. You're just going to use your uh, kind of or spearhead dapping block to uh, kind of just create like a wedge um, that is bent on uh, in two directions. And then you're just going to kind of uh, bend down these sides in a 90 degree angle. And then you can shape the rest as you're attaching it to the other pieces. So as I said earlier, I made the mistake of uh, putting the wedge piece, uh, the kind of that side piece that goes down 90 degrees. Um, I actually used the outer holes by accident where you're supposed to be using the inner holes for the first wedge piece to be attached on. And so for that reason, um, I actually had to undo it. So um, just be sure to make sure uh, to look at the instructional manuals and I'm just bringing it up just because that's kind of where I made a mistake so I'm just trying to preempt you so that you don't make the same mistake I did. Now this part is actually optional. Um, you can actually attach this piece on so that if you don't want the 
uh, this model to be on it, its base stand you can actually use that piece to hang it um, I kind of just did it because um, I didn't want to throw away a piece and then uh, this was actually going to be a display model for at play toys so I wanted to give them the option of being able to just kind of hang it with a string or put it on its base so I've actually put that piece on Now once we put the kind of like the hoodie top with the base of the um, the carriage we're actually going to be done with the baby Bravo or baby Yoda uh, model and then we just have to create the base stand that it's going to be on and then we'll almost be done with this model. Now to finish off this model, we're going to be actually kind of crimpling this uh, kind of fabric piece and just stuffing it in and then just, just kind of shape it around until it looks kind of nice where you have kind of a, like a bed sheet cover behind the uh, Baby Yoda. And then I'm just going to put it on the base so, so that we are finished with the model. And this was the Baby Yoda or the child aka Gragu from The Mandalorian and I just think that overall this, this model was such a clean model and it was I just love the design of the model it looks really great and I think this is kind of one of my favorite models so far from Metal Earth in terms of design difficulty level it's not too difficult it wasn't frustrating at all and everything came in uh, came together a lot easier than other models and with that thank you for watching and if you enjoyed watching this video please hit that subscribe button and hit the like button